Hi everybody, my name is Alexandre Budistano. I'm one of the founders of WebDollar and over the time I have received many many questions about blockchain. What it is, what does it do, how can you use a blockchain, what other applications are for blockchains and how does it work decentralized. So first of all, blockchain idea was to make a database that replicates itself on every machine in order to have consensus in order to understand if a transaction is valid and if you don't want to use a centralized way asking a trusted node if he knows about that transactions if uh, there are funds available from that transactions or something like that you want to validate everything so in order to validate everything you download the entire history or some data in order to understand the past transactions to verify everything that everything is alright both from mathematical point of view like verifying signatures but the most important thing is that there is a linkability so you can track the funds that they exist and that is the owner of those funds so blockchain is actually a decentralized database is like SQL database that is replicated on every machine and the main idea of the blockchain is that although you have all of machines with data only one is delegated, is selected in order to write data in that database in an interval of time. For example, the Bitcoin, it is adjusting, adjusting the difficulty in order to make other nodes to write data, introducing a new block to the blockchain every 10 minutes. WebDollar, for example, has every 40 seconds. And how does it work? There is like a lottery, there is a computation power between everybody which is, you know, they are generating hashes and a hash is a chance that you can write a new block. So how it works is that the blockchain verifies the timestamp of those blocks and when the blocks are generated faster in an interval that it should have been done, it increases the difficulty of the lottery making it harder next time for the people to create too many blocks. If there were too few blocks generated in the blockchain, then uh, the lottery adjusted difficulty will get lower. By this way, it will facilitate a little bit more people in a less or in a less time uh, in order to generate enough blocks so that all the time the number of blocks are generated in the right time. So the main idea is to adjust a target a difficulty of this lottery of who who is making the new block in order to assure that in the network every 10 minutes for Bitcoin every 40 seconds for web dollar a new block is being introduced to the network proposing new transactions in case the block is not valid like it was proposed by the right person by the right miner but it was uh, it contains invalid transactions all other nodes will validate and will see that there is a mistake in that block where somebody tried to attack the network introducing you know, um, wrong transactions or wrong data automatically that block will be rejected and in just very short time after that time there will be another lucky winner but in less time, it, it, you don't need to wait another 40 seconds for web dollar or 10 minutes for Bitcoin. It will maybe take 10 seconds, maybe you're gonna take one minute for Bitcoin or something like that, and a new solution will be proposed. And how does it work? So it is interesting that there have been some hash functions developed that are totally random. So nobody can generate a predefined hash. Hash is like an injective function that you don't know how to reverse engineer the function. For example, you have an X, you apply the function F on X and you get the result Y. But you cannot get, you cannot reverse engineer that function in order to want to get a specific Y in order to find which X should be calculated, which X should use in order to get a specified Y. So by this way, nobody can you know, make any kind of prediction, nobody can do any kind of magic formulas for those hashes. And how it works is just brute forcing. People, the proof of work is just, you know, miners are generating a lot of hashes in order to find that winning, uh, you know, hash, winning ticket for the lottery. In case there are more hashes, more solutions, more blocks generated in the network, 
automatically the, the target uh, will be increased making it more difficult next time so by making an adjustable difficulty everybody will be secured and will have a fixed inflation that is designed from the code for example maybe let's consider this is a normal bitcoin network and um, just suddenly a big mining farm from china or something like that just enter the blockchain mining bitcoin or something like that so automatically the blocks will be generated faster than 10 minutes because there has been new a new mining farm that has an overwhelming power um, let's say like 10 percent so by doing that blocks will be generated with 10 percent faster instead of making them like 10 minutes if you calculate the average time of when those blocks were gener generated you're gonna find that the blocks um, by average were generated with 10 percent faster so the the Bitcoin consensus, all those nodes will see that the blocks were generated faster than it should actually have been done and will change the difficulty, adjusting the difficulty, the target difficulty of the network in order to make sure that next time for the next blocks they will no longer be generated 10% more and by doing this repetitive loop of changing the difficulty in order to assure uh, that a specific number of blocks are generated every X blocks, every X minutes or something like that, you will assure that in your entire network uh, there is only one computer that is proposing the solution for the next block. So by this way you create a decentralized network with full consensus of each other nodes having the data replicated on all of those machines and you select only one computer by random from all this network that is proposing the next block for the next transactions so this is how the security comes from, from the blockchain itself uh, because uh, when you have only one winner from the entire network then automatically a competitor or an attacker who won you know to create his own block or to you know try to make uh, an attack on the chain uh, will have will need to have a lot of uh, computing power in order to get a 50% plus one attack on the network so this is how it works and this is how interior should work and actually if you implement something like this as I described you know to make a uh, you know a, a random hash function generator that everybody's competing in order to get uh, um, a hash below a threshold and you just calculate what was actually the time that all those blocks were generated and ver uh, divided by uh, how much time it should actually take in order to generate those and you change the difficulty that threshold of the of the difficulty then you will be able to make the blocks harder or uh, in order to make them less in, in your interval or to make them more in your interval in case there were not enough blocks in that period of time so this is how the blockchain works the question is what other applications are for blockchains one of the most interesting questions I find is that blockchain can be used to many different applications one of them is actually video gaming so for example the video game every computer knows everything else for example like real-time strategy when you need to know everything all the data how many units are on the map how many uh, you know how many resources you have how many resources the adversary uh, has and so on so a real-time strategy game must have the entire data of the map so blockchain can be applied to a video game uh, but you know blockchain can be applied to anything uh, that you want to make it decentralized making sure that uh, there is no point of failure in your network because the main idea when you create an open source project and a decentralized network uh, you from the day one of launching that project you are you are open to attacks so by having a main network uh, that is available and it's open source it's you know accessed by anyone and is working means there are not a lot of problems and there cannot be a lot of attacks on your network maybe some denial of service attacks in order to you know to um, flood your network to close to shut down some of your nodes or maybe even your network can be temporarily blocked by you know a huge distributed denial of service but that but that doesn't mean that an attacker will forge new coins uh will do double spending attacks or any kind of you know problems by making transactions or making data and there are multiple consensus the most popular one is the proof of work which i described earlier 
by generating hashes and all of those hashes are totally random and nobody can guess and nobody can predict a specific uh, specific kind of hash and it's just like a lottery and based on how much computer power you have you get more hashes if you have a very powerful computer you have more hashes that means more uh, more tickets to that lottery but that means there's other people can again can buy new hardware new equipment maybe more people are gonna join the network so it will become more difficult for you to mine the same coins but it has some value for your blockchain because it costs electricity to generate those coins and as you may know that the electricity required to generate you know to validate the transactions and how much electricity does uh, Bitcoin used in one day is, you know, is more than the electricity used in a big country like Romania or, you know, 20 million people country or something like that because it really requires a lot of electricity but that is only a game. It is only, how, it is just a method to make a decentralized network allowing anybody to forge new coins and to, you know, to, um, to accept transactions, to propagate transactions um, in your system in a decentralized way. There are other, other consensus methods. One of those consensus is actually proof of stake. So instead of mining, instead of buying equipment in order to have a chance on your lottery, you can actually create a simple consensus that um, is based on making a proof that you own funds uh, and uh, that those funds are in your wallet and by making a signature, you can have somebody uh, who is proposing the next block. So proof of stake consensus algorithm is a new method in order to avoid mining, to avoid hardware, electronics, and just have people who own coins, allowing them to generate the new blocks. They are still randomly selected, but the weight that those people are selected is based mostly on how many coins they have and uh, divided by how many coins other people have so by this way you are creating new new blocks and for each block that is generated and added to this blockchain to this chain of blocks will create new coins for you as a reward and will validate new transactions in that chain. So proof of stake is just a simple consensus of this decentralized database in the world allowing people to stake their own coins by giving proofs that they have the coins in the system, giving them the signature that they are the holders of those coins and there is a probability that you will win the next block selection, that you will propose the next block. And that probability is just based on the amount of coins you have and divided by how many coins other people have. There are many consensus algorithms, but those are the two most popular consensus algorithms. The proof of work that is mostly a gold rush people gonna just you know try to use as many equipment they have but unfortunately all the time the proof of work it gets centralized uh, because people some big companies big electronics manufacturers they will be able to produce secret projects secret devices that will have a huge com computational power um, and they will mine in secret I truly believe that Bitcoin um, is pretty much centralized by maybe one two Chinese companies uh, that are manufacturing those ASICs devices uh, in order that are very powerful very efficient in electricity but in the same time very very powerful in generating hashes so all of those proof of four coins they get centralized in a way or another one uh, because this is how it works uh, you know all the time big companies will have more resources in order to compete in this computation computation um, and uh, in proof of stake it is mostly based on how many people you have on your on on your on your platform on your cryptocurrency and um, the, the, the thing is that um, it, it, it is generating an interest like a bank uh, if you have a lot of coins then it becomes quite profitable for you just staking them just like you know staking and 
tell us you're gonna get some rewards from the from the from the blockchain itself that you are not you know selling those coins and more are multiplied in your wallet so it gives some kind of value for example the same way you receive interest from banks because the banks use your money in order to fund different projects to fund different companies and uh, by this way they create new businesses and they make money using your own money uh, but this way proof of stake is enable people uh, to get more coins by staking those thank you very much for your time and i really hope you understood what a blockchain it is what's a decentralized network how proof of work works and maybe you got some idea of how proof of stake works thank you very much for your time and see you soon